So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, wherever you are on the planet, whichever galaxy you're in. Um, welcome to today's edition of Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews, and it's my pleasure to share aspects of the art of Jinshin Jitsu, both in theory and practice, and other modalities uh, that connect, which have overlapping connections, if you like, so that we can broaden our perspective about the whole energy matrix. For those of you that are completely brand new, um, the art of Jinshin Jitsu, per se, um, which is the art of the creator through compassionate human, is really about harmonizing our energy field. And we do that in Jinshin Jitsu um, <clears throat> by connecting our hands, fingers, thumbs, back of hands, to energy pathways which are monitored by what we call safety energy locks. In, in acupuncture, some of you may be familiar with, they talk about meridians. We call them energy pathways. They connect with um, invisible energy centers, sometimes called uh, chakras, unless you're clairvoyant, you can see them, or soul houses, big Sheng Mai pathway, and then branch out tributaries from like a river or a canal to um, smaller rivulets, organ function pathways, which feed the cells of all the different organs in the body. When we place our hands on the energy locks that regulate them, and there's 26 of them, left and right of the spine, three in the <clears throat> arms and hands, we can allow the energy to flow more congruently. Because in our life, mainly because of our lifestyle, our thinking, our speaking and our actions, we can disharmonize that energy and in this understanding, in Asian medical theory, if you will, when we disharmonize those thoughts, words, and deeds, it throws out all those energies that are attempting to work harmoniously through those energy pathways. So that's it in a nutshell, or hopefully it was a nutshell. Um, and today is yet again another opportunity to share the art with a mystery presenter who will now become known to all of you. And I'm quite excited. Um, it's a pleasure always to have a mystery presenter, but I actually happen to know them as well. And, <laughs> and today, as I mentioned in the ad, it's about our furry friends, D-A-W-G-S, dogs, um, D-O-G-S. And so if, um, where are you? Where are you? Oh, yeah, I got you. Can you show yourself? <laughs> if you don't show yourself, I can't spotlight you. It's like I'm trying to get my video on. Yeah, get your video oh. on. <laughs> it's been, it worked yesterday. There. I think. Yeah, we got her. Okay, you got it? I just have to. Oh, good. Here you go. Are we good? Yes. I All mean, right. um, at the moment, Roger um, and Tracy, That's I can right. see they're kind of, yeah, their heads are cut off slightly. But the dog, I don't know who it is. Is it Rue? Is it spelled Boise or Boise? Boise. And, hey, Boise? Yeah. Yeah, as in the... Uh, <laughs> as in the state or whatever a town city and halo is that right so are we ready um gal are, are you yeah uh, you're kind of bending over okay um, there you go right i'm going to get out of the way so welcome welcome gail roger and tracy rue boise and halo um, this is your opportunity to present yourself. Um, are they, by the way, are the, are the dogs a mixed bag, male and female, or are they all male or all female? I'm sorry, what? What's their gender? Are they all males or all females or a mix? 
This one is female, and the other two are male. Oh, who's the female? The one that looks the most male. <laughs> so the little Brussels Griffon is a female. Okay, and who and, and, and what's her name? Rue. Oh, that's Rue. Okay, Rue. Well, welcome, Rue, Boise, and Halo, Roger, Tracy, and eventually Gail. Um, let me get out of the way. Then you're going to be forced to show your face. Yeah, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we we got you. You're on. Fire away. I'm gonna mute myself now, Gail. It's it's all up to you, Roger and Tracy, and the three mutts and the three dogs. You. Okay, thanks, Terry. Um, like you said, I'm Gail Okre. I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and it's really great to to be invited as a guest to Terry's uh, harmonize to energize and. Just a little bit about myself. I am going to sit up here next to our beautiful lab. Um, I am from Green Bay and I grew up on a farm. So of course I got all of animals, right? I grew up on a farm and in 1979, I started raising and showing Boston Terriers. So I've been in the dog world for an awful long time. And uh, when in 1998, I discovered Jin Jin Jitsu found me and I was um, went because I had severe fibromyalgia and as it began to help me I thought my goodness why can't it help my dogs too and so with my the dogs that live with me when they had a challenge or they needed to settle down or as they age I always gave them Jin Jin Jitsu my young puppies I've had several litters so when my mom was my uh, mom dog was expecting her litter. I would naturally share it with her and just help nurture her through that process of uh, having and taking care of her puppies. And when those little puppies were born, the first thing they got um, for those who practitioners or people who are aware of it is that main central, um, just to get that vitality into those that young those young puppies and that litter. And so friends began to ask me. I'm in the dog show world. I help rescue groups. I help a lot of different uh, people in the 4-H uh, kids. I'm teaching a 4-H uh, class this uh, currently for 4-H uh, and their dog program. And so they would ask me, boy, Gail, do you think there's something that can help my dog? And so slowly people would be bringing dogs to me. And I and large horses and things like that. And um, when in 2009, I opened my Jin Jin Jitsu office outside of my home called Key Elements for Health. And of course I could not open an office without having a dog piece to it. So, so I could help people and also all their pets. So today we have um, Tracy, Roger, and they're three wonderful dogs with us. They have a very special purpose, two of these dogs, very, very special. They are um, service dogs. So Tracy has trained Alo back here. Our little lab friend, I'm gonna shift this a little bit so you can see him. <laughs> He is a registered service dog. <laughs> and uh, how long did it take you, Tracy? So for your he, went, he went through two years of training and he went through a program called Journey Together. And it's through the prison program in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And it's pretty neat. So they do the major training. Then there's socializers that take him out. So he went through two years of training through that. And then Boise is going through self-training with us and some dog trainers on our own. So he is nine months old and Halo is seven years old. He's been with me for five of those years, but we were able to help with some of his training too as socializers. So that's for a dog at this level. That's a, that's a lot, a long process. And, a, and for everyone involved, a huge labor of love. And you look at that, especially not only does Jin Jin Jitsu help our service dogs here, but just all of them. And, you know, it'll help relieve discomfort, 
stress and anxiety if they get into a situation that they're a little uncertain of what's going on. Some emotional support as well, how to make them feel centered and comfortable during whether it's the human has a stressful situation and they pick up on that, or if it's the dog's stressful situation. It really helps their immune system and a nice thing it does, and we'll see this transformation here today, is the wonderful extra bond that it deepens between you and your dog. And so when those when my dogs feel a little off balance, they always come to me and they sit and they look at me like, I think I would like a session. So I don't know if you've experienced that, Tracy, through this last several months of working with them every day. Right, and we tend to do this at night too because then it's like we're totally at peace and he's ready to just lay there and pull the energy. The shifts are just amazing. It's like um, they had a hard time walking because he had a leg injury, had a partial tear in his ACL. And that's why um, we came to Gail and we're like, okay, let's try this. And it was just amazing. It took several weeks, like typical, but then it's like, he, he just like became a new dog again, he became Halo again. He had his energy, his shine in his eyes, and just the way he would interact was way better. And just what I saw him, because I haven't seen him for like four weeks or so. Right. Just to walk in, he was like, oh my gosh, he was confident. The eyes just were shining. He was so <laughs> just comfortable with himself and self-assured. And he knew that he was on, he was in his game. He was back to where he used to be. And so that's always just so fun. You'd like to just hug them when they get that big of a transformation. <laughs> so today we're gonna work a little with um, Halo and I'm gonna show you a little bit of some of the things that we have done with each one of these dogs. If you have any questions, Terry's gonna pop in with some questions if you happen to have some. And we just have to remember that, you know, you know, for our program here today, those service dogs are so versatile and they really assist in all aspects, not only the physical, mental, emotional piece. And that's one real important reason to offer that to service animals. It's just that they are so responsible. One might say over responsible <laughs> and they don't really get time off. <laughs> and they're not a 40 hour, 40 hour work week. So when they get their downtime, I think they always have a little ear open to make sure things are okay. Right. So it's so great to just be able to support them and give them a space to be able to just exhale and come back to center. And so today we're going to start with that with Halo. All right. All right, buddy. Do you want his best box? It doesn't matter. Sit my friend. There you are. You're a good boy. So this is our emotional balancer. I'm on the dog's right side. I am going to take my right hand and I'm going to put it under his chest. My left hand's going to be up on his withers. That's on top of his shoulder blades. Now our little friend Halo here, he can lay down. He can sit up. He can do whatever his little heart desires while he's getting this session. And this is all about helping our breath also. By holding oh, this area. There's the yawn. <laughs> there's the yawn. He knows the program, <laughs> don't you, buddy? Don't you? Sometimes at first when he came, he had bones to chew on because when they first start, sometimes that feels a little different in their body. And they're not quite sure why when you're touching a certain area, they're feeling it in their toes, right? So sometimes in my office, when my dogs come in for a 20 minute hands-on session and five minutes to get them up the table and five minutes to give home care. So a session in my office is 30 minutes for dogs. And so I really wanna make the most of that. 
someone give me a peanut butter cup? So sometimes it's, they bring two bones. Sometimes we freeze a little peanut butter cup <laughs> and just make sure with now that they're putting xylitol and peanut butter to check the label that it's all peanut butter and nothing anything else. <laughs> One of these days I'll create a little a peanut butter stand here. <laughs> and that just kind of keeps them busy. And if you need it, if at home, if your animals are a little um, antsy when you first start, you could absolutely put a little peanut butter or their favorite chew bone and have them have them uh, <laughs> that's them on your nose, bud. It's like that's perfect. I can get it off right there. So as yeah, so as we're holding this. I often, oh, my little friend, you yes. sat up here a long time <laughs> waiting, didn't you? Oh, your favorite oh, bones down there? Is it? Do I have Boise come up? We can just set up here. We can flip that down. We'll let you do it on the ground. See, I sat up on that table for 15 minutes already. I thought I was done. My timer went off, right? Good yawn, buddy. So this helps him be in the present. For these uh, service dogs, that exhale. When we exhale, we can let go of anything that no longer serves us. And it really is a call back to center. Oh, the peanut butter's burping you, right? <laughs> a little too much. And I'm often reminded when I think about that breath and how healing that breath is. I'm reminded of Muriel Carlton. She would always tell us in classes, the breath me. As we are with the breath, I am. So as this dog is just coming to center, holding this area, touches in that lung and that breath, breathing influences the breath. Well, he's going down. <laughs> you just wanted me to kneel on the floor today. Right. He's like, this is totally calm. And um, it's going to go back to oneness. And as we are in our breath, they are in their breath. That's one thing I remind, and I think I absolutely reminded Tracy when I sent her home with home care, is that when you touch them, then you remember to breathe, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes our concern is so great for our animals. And we always are like, am I doing it right? Am I doing the best job I can? Oh, my friend, just breathe. Because okay. this body and, just and, the more and your <laughs> body knows exactly what to do. And trust in that. And through our breath, it resonates to their breath. So we have to think of that breath is the thing that animates us all, it gives us our spark. It helps harmonize everything. This also helps balance the appetite. And what I really love about this whole is that it brings confidence to the animal. So when I have like young puppies, and they're not certain, they get a little uncertain in certain situations. I love just having them sit on my lap and just holding this area. And so it's a great emotional balancer. As he gets his, his, uh, the rest of his flow, his little buddy's horning in on his time here. <laughs> um, he, I, it reminds me of I recently um, got another Boston Terriers are what I have at my house. And she was 15 months old. And so it was just a, uh, a change from the goings around of one household to another. And so when she came that first day, I just sat her on my lap and I did this. And it was so cute. She took her little paws and she wrapped it around my wrist. 
And it's like, <laughs> and exhaled. And I said, yes, my little friend, it's good to let go. This is a new beginning and a new start. And so it's, it's for any situation. That was a great breath. Look at that. Complete relaxing. What a good boy. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, my friend. You're a good boy. So like Tracy said, um, Halo had that knee challenge when he came in. And that kennel rest and the homework that she was given to help Halo. He's like a new dog. Which is why Boise came into the picture. <laughs> because Tracy, she had been nursing that knee for how long? Tracy? Almost a year. A year. Yeah. And it wasn't recovering. Nope. Mm -hmm. Before I saw you. <laughs> and so, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, there's a time when they have to retire from their job. And if he didn't recover, he was not going to be able to really help you in his full capacity right. as a service dog, which is, which is heart-wrenching, I mean, for both of you. He did his work, and how do you, he still has the love and the compassion and the drive, the heart to do it. But then when he can no longer do everything he should, you know, it's, it's hard on this dog, and it's also hard on Tracy. Um, because they know each other and they, you they're know, a team. <laughs> they're a team. So therefore, Mr. Boise, this little Frenchie, <laughs> came into the picture. So if you look at his little scarf, he has says service dog in training. So he still, even though our wonderful little friend Halo here, I know, but you're done. Are you all done? He's done. <laughs> Good boy. Um, has, is still able to do his job. Right. Mr. Bozy is still going to be um, trained into a new capacity and his service dog capacity. Now, my little friend, if you would have stayed up there, they could have saw your shiny eye. <laughs> yeah. Come here, bud. wonderful for those who have we can get you up here because we're going to get one that actually wants to be <laughs> okay so here's what happens when they come in <laughs> she all jumps Tracy right up there she's like free. i'm so ready <laughs> and they all fight to see who's going to be up on the table what i use is i have a uh, electric grooming table and my grooming table goes up and down so if i have a little dog we can keep it or a big dog that size or i can move her up and give them, do you want a little elevator ride, my friend? Your chair? Okay. <laughs> Here we go. We're going up. Oops. Oh. You're good with your elevator ride. <laughs> Here you are. Now they can really see you. For me as a practitioner, I like little ones. I always, I meant, can many times sit on the chair with, sit on the table with them because they're so big. Right? Or get up and sit on a stool. And then my body posture as a practitioner is a little better. So our little Rue, this is a Bru uh, Brussels Griffon. How old is she? She's seven. She's seven years old. When she came, you're okay. You're okay. When she came, she was really kind of uncertain about many, many things. Right? right? And when you felt, you could feel that there was a lot more tension underneath that chest, in that chest region, when we started this flow. And so with, with Rue, because of a lot of that extra tension, she didn't, she would tuck her tail a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, she wasn't able to walk the distances that she had, had been able to before. 
So and now she's able to do that again. So now she can go miles. It's amazing how she can keep up with Halo. <laughs> <laughs> These little legs keeping up with that big lab. And, you know, so she wasn't just able to do some things that she would normally like to do. So she got left home a little more than right. she just wasn't as happy either i mean now she's back to being oh, yeah. her happy self and she like does her little spins Spin and, <laughs> and so with her we did start with our little heart hug here and also because she she had some changes living with you know mm -hmm. yeah because she wasn't our dog the whole time we've only had her Let's see about a year and a half because we got her in January yeah. of 2022. Yes, so she had some adjustments because of household, new household, and so her homework was. I'm going to try to get it this way. That here is her upper arm. So that's here's our 19 or elbow on the dog, and we're going to use an upper arm. And we're going to, I'm going to lift her up a little so you can see where I'm going. And on the opposite thigh, inside above the knee, the thigh area of the dog. So this is, for those who are familiar with Mary Burmeister self-help books, this is like a self-help for a 10 flow, for a 10. So it's going to help that whole offline that whole emotional piece here with all the different changes and a lot of times with animals when we have some things going wrong with this shoulder it may be the cause may be in the opposite hip line which is why when she came in I looked at that tail to see how that tail was if there was any tension in that tail going up into the hip and when that began to clear up and she began to raise her tail, her, her mobility was much better. Her stride was greater and she could keep up with those big dogs. She goes, I might be little inside, but I have a big heart, don't I? Mm -hmm. You do. So for many, many weeks, you did this particular self-help for her. Mm -hmm. And it was, you could tell right at each session. I mean, because I could go from here and I could go for a walk in the park with all three of them. And it was amazing. So we still were able to be mobile and, and do other things through the healing. So it was really good. It was just amazing to see their demeanor change back to their happy self. <laughs> yeah. I know. Good girly. And your shiny eyes. <laughs> I love it. Want to lay down? You can lay down, my girl. So this is the only girl, little lady in the bunch, right? You have all those boys. So Tracy, you do that home care once a week, maybe? Um, in the beginning, I did it like every day and then every other day and then down to once a week. And then um, Halo was doing really good. And then he got excited. He was running in sand and he tweaked his leg a little bit. And I was like, oh, here we go again. And I went back to every day and within days, he was back to himself again. So it's like, wow. <laughs> Isn't that, is that truly amazing? I think, you know, it not only amazes you as the owner of how quickly that their body responds. Right. But as a practitioner, just like it brings joy to your heart that, oh my gosh, look at that great transformation. <laughs> because they just want to get better and do their things. They want to run and be the best happy little free friends they can be in. So, yes. yeah, good girl. You're not yawning today. <laughs> Maybe you did that before you came, didn't you? 
What a good girl. And it's amazing how just even just being in the same room, um, when you're working on one dog, it's like you can tell the benefits to everybody. It's like everybody just goes to a different level of energy. Mm -hmm. So and so just think as we give, we receive. So think how that's helping us also right. as we are sharing this beautiful art with our four-legged friends here. Good girly. What else is with you today? Anything? <laughs> no, you just came to visit. I haven't <laughs> seen you in a while. But if you look at her, she's she's very calm. She's not nervous. When she first came in, she right. was like wondering what was, you know, something different and, and what was going to happen. Right, because a dog won't eat if they're nervous. <laughs> right. And she's very mm. particular about what she eats. And they always Girl, like right. it up here. All right. So should we get your brother up here? Oh, yeah. He's a handle, isn't he? Yeah. So Boise's only nine months old. Let's get your elevator down. <laughs> you Girl. like the ride. Good girl. I know. What a good girly you are. There you are, my little friend. Okay, boys, I know you've been waiting. You're just the first one up here, and you're like, I'm claiming the middle spot, right? We're going to move you up. What you doing with that one? Well, yes, you are a star. <laughs> there you go. Oops, we're going to put you a little more. There you go. What a good boy. So since Boise, being a young dog, how old was he, Trace, when you came uh, in with him? I was he six months. I think he was six. And oh, they're a little rambunctious. And if you, if anybody is used to this Frenchie breed, <laughs> they're quite clowny. And they're... They do silly things. They're not mean or anything. They're just yeah, silly. They do. He, he entertains himself, which entertains us. That's for sure. Yeah, they're very clowny. They're very silly. So for him. He loves to drop things over the edge just like a kid, too. He loves gravity. <laughs> he really likes you to work gravity. So what? You just stay up there, young man. <laughs> yes. So with him. I wanted to make sure those safety energy locks. And again, that whole theme of the breath. So we were holding 11. The homework was 11, right where the neck meets the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And right here by the groin area, right in this tuck up. They call it the tuck up by the dog. Some dogs will let you go in under that tuck up and others are not comfortable with that. So if you're in that area, then, you are absolutely fine. He really likes to make his humans work for him. <laughs> I'm gonna, I have this whole table, but I'm gonna chew right on this edge to see if I can drop it and see if Dad will pick it up for me. <laughs> there you go. Gravity at work again, right? I know, oh yeah, that was hard work. He's gonna pick it up. So again, we're thinking about that oh, breath. There, there, there you go. <laughs> what a boy. And we're going to partner this in a minute with the 1125. As these guys are growing it. Oh my oh, goodness, that was quite go. a big one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> he burped. I know. You never got so much congratulations for a burp before, did you? What a good boy. Uh. And remember to breathe. We're letting go. Now you heard the clock. Wow. Good boy.
We're cleaning and receiving with each exhale and inhale. I know. And then I moved my hand that was in the tuck up right to his sit bone. I'm going to turn it to the side. So you see, it's right that little bony area. It's the ischium in people. Oh my <laughs> goodness. See, I don't want you to touch my itch ischium. So it's right here. So that's our 25. I know it. <laughs> Come on. You can't be down. You just want your boom. You just want your boom. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Since I'm a puppy. You getting so excited? Yeah, you, <laughs> you are. I know it. I know. Are you going to do the, the little frenzy oh, roll? So I know you are. He I loves know. ears. <laughs> I know you are. So sometimes they get a little crazy. You get a little crazy? Do you? Just wanted my darn bone. Didn't want the other one to get it. <laughs> Did you think she was going to get that on you? So always with this segment, we were focusing on that breath. That exhale, that inhale, that movement, because we are the breath and they are the breath. And being a young dog, playing around, getting rough, rough and tumble with the other dogs, it's nice to keep that breath in harmony, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> I know we shouldn't have wound you up, right? That wasn't a hard job, was it? No. I know. Should we do the other side? Here we are. Oh boy. <clears throat> so it's just as easy as pie one. I um I think Tracy, you guys did stuff on the couch, right? Mm -hmm. With the couch, the floor, sometimes in their beds. It all depends like where we were when we were in a down downtime is when I would try to do it the most. And or after exercise. Yeah, when they were ready. Sometimes I have clients who get one of those foldable tables with a telescopic feet, and their, their dog goes up on that. And then they have a bigger dog. Like uh, I have clients with like a Bernese mountain dog or uh, a border collie that was much larger and uh, then it was easier for them on their back to give them their home care right okay that's pretty much what we were working through with these three wonderful little jin jin jitsu dogs <laughs> um for for rule he was pretty centered when he came in. He was just that puppy and that breed personality of clowny and, and you know, and then when they're trying to make everybody laugh, they don't always make the best decisions when they <laughs> jump around. Yeah, so she likes to jump up and down. That is definitely so the thing. we wanted to make sure, you know, with the structure in the back with more of that bulldog. Oh, well, that was good. There we go. um, Shaking it off. Bulldog hip line back there that he really protected like his knees and things like that and and kept all those safety energy locks with that supervisory uh, pathway in order. So he just needed to grow up and almost stay out of trouble with all your silliness, right? And you're not going to jump down from here. No. <laughs> we'll get it. Okay, we'll give you your elevator ride down. Are you ready, my little guy? Isn't that a fun ride? <laughs> Good boy. All right, my friend. There you go. So if anyone has questions, but I just want to remind you that 
you know, give your dog the gift of healing with Jin Jin Jitsu. And whether your dog is recovering from an injury, struggling with anxiety, or simply just needs some extra TLC and love and attention, Jin Jin Jitsu can make a world of difference. As you've heard from Tracy, and you've seen with the difference in these three dogs that came in. So they can just say goodbye to discomfort and hello to a happier, healthier life. And today our furry friends are a great partner and they aid in better living for Tracy and her family. So they love us with unconditional love and it really is our responsibility to, to provide them with their best care possible. And Jin Jin Jitsu fits right in there with that holistic approach because it enhances their well being and it can do no harm. So remember, every tail deserves to wag with joy. So, are there any self, uh, any questions or anything I can talk further on? Or, Terry, you want to talk? That was delightful. <laughs> that, was, that was so sweet. Um, let, let's let's see if I got the names right. The the guy that was up there, the the little boxer was Rue. Is that correct? Boise. Boise. Oh, oh. oh okay. Yeah, yeah the, the Frenchie. The last yeah. one that was Boise. Oh, okay. And Rue Ru is Rue is the female. Yeah. Right. She's the Brussels Griffon. Okay. And Halo was the big lab. Correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to get them all up in a row unless they will cooperate. Um, I, you know, I just want to pick up that point. I think uh, Tracy mentioned it, um, how, you know, when you're doing Jin Jin Jitsu on anyone, whether it be animal, plant or vegetable, um, it does change the energy field. And so everyone gets something from it. Um, and, you know, if we all just held any finger right now, it would influence the whole circuit, the whole energy field that we're all in. Right. Um, anyway, I thought that was an absolute, as I said, absolutely delightful presentation. Um, I think Adele is grinning from ear to ear. Did you know Adele's on? <laughs> yes, I did see Adele. Yeah. I, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, don't make me nervous, Adele. <laughs> oh, because yeah. oh, I'm so scary. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Only... I've had classes with you. You are yeah. not scary. <laughs> uh, but both of my both of my dogs came to listen, and well, the cat wandered through. But <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> just so beautiful and i also found it interesting that you said halo was trained in a prison prison program did they practice the jin jin jitsu within that program um not yet no not this, yet. okay right now well, it's a, just a training program yeah yeah oh yeah. well just so beautiful thank you to all two-legged and four-legged thank you yeah. Um, has anyone got any questions around working with their own animal or uh, with someone else? I know Nancy mentioned, I guess, Nancy, you work with animals yourself with Jin Shin, right? Do, do you want to say anything? No? I have found it very helpful with shelter animals, with dogs in rescue, with foster dogs, um, with our own dogs. Um, it does that first hold especially helps them to calm down when you're trying to evaluate them. You know, you respectfully wait for them to be able to come to you if they're in a shelter and scared. But I have just found marvelous things working with the herding dogs and helping them to calm down and show their real personality. But it's just been magical with all of the dogs that I work with. Right. I remember um, I was at uh, one of the shelters about an hour from here. I would go monthly down there. And um, they usually save some of the tougher ones for me. And they had one that she was so petrified, they were afraid to draw blood because she, she just wouldn't let anybody. So I gave her maybe about five to 10 minutes and she was sleeping in my arms. <laughs> and, and, uh, the um, 
one of the workers said, oh gosh, why didn't we have the draw blood draw person here today? She could have pulled that arm and just that and just pulled blood right away. Um, in that program, uh, they would have four or five that I would write, I would give sessions to, then I would write homework sheets for the helpers. And many times um, within two weeks, they'd be placed. They were able to work with them and bring them into themselves so that they were able to place them out into the community. It was, it's very fun. And how I found that is I was at a vendor fair and they had rabbits there and they had a rabbit that was freaking out and they gave her a session. And the rabbit <laughs> calmed down so she could be on display. And then they asked me if I would come down and help them with their programs. So that was fun. Now tell me, do any of your friends pick up what you're doing and then attempt to do it on you? I know cats do. Oh, my dogs all do. I'll tell you, um, this morning I got a beautiful flow from my middle dog before, <laughs> before I got up this morning. Um, they just know, and especially with my uh, fibromyalgia label that we're working through, they know exactly where it's hurting there. If it's my hip, if it's my arm, and they just lay there in bed. Um, I had one who had just passed away. Um, he was he was really like the Jin Shin Jitsu man, master. He knew directionality. He would lay one way for directionality if he knew that he wanted that flow to run that way. And if it was a different day, he'd point his body in the other direction. And his mother was very, um, she was a very, very good Jin Shin Jitsu dog also. And if I, I had a friend sitting on a, a lounge chair that didn't feel well, and she jumped up there to help my good friend. And then the other two, her two, her two puppies jumped up there. And what she did, she gave them a little swat and said, I pick first, you guys come next. <laughs> so she went, she picked where she was going to lay. And then the next one came up and picked that spot. And then the next one came up and they all laid in different areas. But she was very direct. Like, I know I'm the oldest one. I know exactly where this needs to start. And then you guys pick the other two places to lay down. She was just quite the character. Oh. oh, I got some hands raising there. Becca, do you want to unmute yourself? Sure. I am unmuted, aren't I? You are Can now, you know? yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's interesting. I was late for this class because I was on my way home from the vet. So I'm curious about ear projects with dogs. Because ear my projects? Do yeah. Okay, so is it a ear infection and is it chronic? It is, well, she doesn't think it's in her ear or anything. She just thinks it's in the, in the canal and it is pretty chronic. At least it's recurring pretty often, both ears. Okay, what breed? Does it have an upright ear or drop ear? I don't know. Little, uh, can Little you see? Drop. Okay, um, usually with that, I would <laughs> really look at a kidney flow and umbilicus because you're a practitioner. Yeah. And this field that kidney flow that'll help that up the bladder can help it but i think i would drive right into the kidney flow and uh that usually cleans those ears up pretty well even if it's a you know a bacterial or something like that that's usually my go-to and maybe you might now i think i would do a kidney flow <laughs> and then umbilicus and maybe a small intestine those three finger flows uh, those two other finger flows to go in there, a kidney and then umbilicus and small intestine. Okay, good. Thank that you. That would be, and you might open it with a, maybe like a 14 or do some kind of a prep work with a quick, like 14 to open up that waistline. So, because kidney goes into that 14, into that rib to scatters. Well, and he does make sure that that's clear so things can go up and down. Perfect. He doesn't tolerate a lot, but I'll do do that as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Usually, I've had really good luck with um, with that with um, yeah. kidney. Right. And when we had a in two thousand and I don't know if it was okay. five or six, we had Lynn Fluger came and did a weekend with Jin Jitsu and dogs for practitioners. 
And so we had a little um, packer with an in front of ear infection. So she suggested, and I think she paired it also with a nine float. So that might be a suggestion. Check out those nines and see. I will. Oops, can't hear you. Somebody's not muted. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Let me know, text me or something. Let me know if that helps. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I will. Hey, Gail. Yeah? Are you able to get more in the picture or are you busy with the uh, oh, no, I'm not. I just didn't want my head sitting. I thought you'd rather look at the dogs than me. <laughs> oh, sure. No, I mean, if, maybe. I'm like the could, bystander in this story. You, you could sit next to Roger, maybe, if that's comfortable. So, oh, I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very good. There we got you. <laughs> All right. So, Adele. Oh. That's very impressionistic. I love it. <laughs> Except... Look at the energy moving. Just look at yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was it was simply um oh uh uh speculative that I don't think we can get to the bottom of, but Terry, a little bit ago you phrased question you know and do okay, well, your friends <laughs> well, you, you, you just get to hear me talk and work on you and you know i think they've known it all along and they were doing it long before we knew that but we didn't understand what those particular placements of their little paws meant right you know, when I think about how my little dachshund is, when I was a child, how she would get on me and place her little paws, I realize now it was, a, I had some rough times as a child and, and she was just, she was just a 22-er with those little legs coming down through the 13, you know, but it took yeah. me 40, 50 years to, to catch up, to decode it. Yeah. And, that that makes perfect sense, actually, Adele. Are any of your um, fairy friends around at the moment? Because we've lost Gail. Gail, we've lost you. Yep, you lost me because my poor little camera was sitting in a stand, oh. and it took it took a digger. So I'm going to try to flip to the um, my other. I've just asked. I've just asked Adele to see if she's got any of her fairy friends in um, the sure intervening uh, time while you get this sorted yeah. out yeah and uh we we'll just entertain galen the minute you pop on okay so there you go hi who we got here <laughs> so it is carmen oh she's she's very hard to work with she <laughs> <laughs> desperately so she's like portuguese water girl um princess of everything and she could just be trying to rescue. Uh, she had mouth cancer and she'd been um, clubbed with a two by four, they speculated from the x rays, and she could hardly walk using her, her left hind leg, didn't. Oh, and really now she, yeah. and she runs around. Okay, not at the moment, but she's just 100% peachy. I mean, we did have the cancer removed. I definitely went to um, a surgeon. Anyway, I see Gail. So oh, I'm going to shut up and just wanted to just, the only thing to say is just, you know, I I start in with everybody on that 13 and 10. And I know you do. So mm -hmm. you don't have to, you know, with a human, you talk about exhale down the front and inhale up the back. They're not going to get it that way, necessarily. But when your hands lovingly just start here, I think they learn, oh, oh, I'm getting a session. Mm -hmm. so, so interesting, guys. That, that, <laughs> that, that, that hold you call the withers, that's for all animals, right? Because I remember the withers for the horse. So wherever you place your hand there, that's the withers of the animal yeah yes yeah it's okay. shoulder blade yeah okay mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. Thank you. Love you. I've got a human showing up. I'm going to go to work. All Bye. right. Thank you, Adele. <laughs> Thank you, Adele. See you later. All right. Welcome, All right. welcome back there, Gail. <laughs> okay. So we got, now we got my laptop camera, which isn't as pretty. <laughs> but, okay, folks. So else? I've added on a little extra time here. So um, if there's any more questions um, for Gail or Roger or Tracy or the um, the three wise dogs, um, <laughs> fire away. You're a little blurry there with your camera. Yeah. I think it's our backlighting. <laughs> we'll block it. There. Yeah. Um, no, that's this camera isn't as good as my other camera. That's why uh, I was working with my stand camera. Well, I, I think we got the impression. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, then it had a hiccup. <laughs> it's it's very impressionistic, that's for sure. Well, um, I think it's just an absolutely sweet application when you work with Jin Shin Jitsu on animals. And if anyone's got any other questions, you can raise your hand now. Or um, Gail, have you put your information and Roger and Tracy's in the chat? Okay. And, you know, I just really wanted to thank you all I could have done this at home, but I wanted you to see that for those practitioners and the audience, you can have an office. My office is a separate room and my human office is right next door. And it's been that way for 12, 13 years. So, you know, my landlords are good. My dogs are good when they come in. So, you know, they're just silly, right? Just silly. But um, so you can, it is possible to set up your office so that you can't have your animals come in and out. And when I have them, I, I leave a 15 minute window before to greet them to come in and a 15 minute window after their session to clean up. You know, I have a different towel on that every time they come in and then I disinfect and Sometimes they're hairy, so you got to sweep up hair. Um, but you know, just I think that I think that's important because I will tell you, I don't believe we have enough practitioners for animals in Jin Jin Jitsu that are actually have an active office open. And mm. it's not it's not that I just had to do a few little tweaks and I took an extra insurance out for mm. animals. So. Um, it, it's a doable thing, and it depends on the state that you're in. That governs a lot, too, what state you're in practicing. Um, I was at our national um, dog show, and I was in Ohio, and I did um, several dogs going before they walked into the ring. They were a little stressed out. So I did several dogs. Um, Before the show, you want to put in um, sure. anything or we can ask you? I don't care. It's like our names. You could put in. Um, so Tr Tracy and Roger, yeah. do you do you both work with Gail or? No, they're my clients. They work okay. with me because we help their dogs, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. And have you have you studied Jin Shin Jitsu as well with Gail or uh, any nope. of the courses? This says yeah. this says clients and what she's taught us to do with the dogs. Beautiful, beautiful. And look at the result. You know, <laughs> they're good students. I just told them what to do, and we went through what how to place their hands. They did it, and it worked. Yep, we came you know, we came for several sessions, and then. Um, and we did on our own and then came back again and then did on our own and and then we did the program today and it's talk about a full circle success story for three dogs yeah, yeah. and when i when they come in you know there are sometimes i see dogs weekly for me weekly is close together because they their owners do their cleanup during the week before they come back um there are times that i will see them multiple times during a week, but that's very unusual. Um, I had a chow come in that had a uh, um, few um, uh, stenosis of the spine that popped up. And I saw her six weeks in a row 
And then pretty soon it, it loosened up and she gates like nobody's business before she could hardly walk in when she first called me. And that dog just turned right around, but she did two times a day homework. She wanted her dogs to be better. So she did morning and evening homework all the time. And, and it depends. So I think with when we give the, um, those owners home care, we are engaging and have them participating in that whole transformation and change of that animal and helping them recover and helping move that process so much quicker. And when they come in during the week, we t I tweak, I check, and I'm there to guide them. If we have to change a homework, we'll tweak a homework. But that's what, you know, I get things going, I get things started, and I do some of the heavier duty cleanup, but their job is daily dirt and dust, greasy <laughs> grime, right? And yeah. keep that cleaned up. So. Yeah. Well, this has been um, very sweet, um, very informative, and a total delight to meet your th three, six of you, right? Balance. <laughs> three, oh, yeah. Yeah. three dogs. It's, that was beautiful. Um, I really love um, if you can come back sometime. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, if you would, if you can come back sometime, how you would bite just do some self-help without touching the dogs and see what they do something like that that would be fun um because i'm curious you know adele was talking about earlier how the animals instinctively know this they instinctively do so what if we stood back and actually just did our self-help and watched what they do have you done that guy i'm sure you have yes yeah Yep, we actually did that with Halo because Halo really does not like a lot of personal up close touch and stuff. So in the beginning, he was like, okay, I'll go on the table because you're asking me to. And so we did do some sessions like that where he was either off on the floor, off the side. And then it was amazing because you could still see like right now, <laughs> the reason you're not seeing him is because he is sleeping. <laughs> He's so relaxed. He's just like, ah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because that, that makes perfect sense. Well, folks, has anybody else got any questions? Raise your hand. As I say, I extended the time a little bit. So if you do have any questions, this is your moment. Otherwise, um, thank you, all six of you. Uh, thank you, Gail. Thank you, Tracy and Roger. Thank you, Halo, Boise, and Rue. <laughs> you're welcome yeah um really appreciate you coming on and presenting today and hope you'll come back at some point soon i'm looking to do more presentations with more than one presenter so that was really great you kind of kicked that kicked that off so folks um i'll get the replay up uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours and uh, you'll be able to tell your friends, especially those maybe that would like to explore more about uh, animals, dogs in particular, but just animals generally. Um, it'll be up on Facebook or you can connect them to um, <clears throat> my link to uh, YouTube. Hey, um, Gail, have you put your information in the chat room so that people- Oh, I just put my key elements for help that they can get me through that. Um... What else do you want? My office is key elements for health. Yeah. Um, what's a good email for you? I put that up. Oh, you, you did? Email at key elements for health, or I will give you my. Otherwise, it's Gail. J did you say, did you just say you put that up already, or you're going to put it up? No, I did put it up. Oh, oh yeah, you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's that's me being a little tardy. Yep. And, key elements. Every Wednesday, we have a self-help for animals on our Facebook page. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's, yeah, Wednesday is Wagon Wednesday, so it's all about animals. So it'll be, during the month, we'll have a self-help, or then we'll just have some tips and some other things. And sometimes you'll see a video of Jasmine, so I have some stuff on my YouTube page with so my old Boston, and I'm doing flows on her and talking you through it. Perfect. So 
you do you want people just to email you and you give them the information about the Facebook page? Yeah, you can. Or if you just go into Facebook key elements for help, it'll come up. Okay. Facebook key elements for health. Perfect. And that's did you say every Wednesday? Every Wednesday. Wednesday is animals. Monday is um quotes. Once a month we have a Mary quote. And Friday is self-help. Feel good Friday. So it'll be self-help all Fridays. Oh, yeah. Well, you yeah, so we three you, times a week. Yeah. You're busy. Or or, yeah. or do you have other people come on as well? No. It's, it's just just yourself. Yeah. What about Carol? Does Carol get involved? Um, Carol's, my sister's retired. So she just does family and friends. But she used to, um, years ago, we used to go to, um, it's a horse, one of the biggest horse riding uh, events for pleasure horses in the state of Wisconsin is about an hour from us. And it was four days of uh horse trail riding. And so we always, my office always put up a tent. And so we would do people in a tent and it's in October, so it's a little chilly. So we had a heated tent and we would do riders and things like that. And then both my sisters would go out to the paddock if the horses needed it. And they would go out to the paddocks and give horses sessions. Is that, that's Mary, is it? Your Mary other sister? and my sister, Carol, yep. Yeah, Mary and Carol, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well. Do say hi to both of them. Um, and it's, again, been a, a complete delight to have you on um, with your um, animal friends. L look at, <laughs> oh, what a sweetheart. <laughs> they, they, they totally Your seem to have. Sleeping yeah. on, underneath the desk. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> they seem to have totally enjoyed being on this um presentation and receiving the gin chin obviously all right folks well unless there's any last minute questions i'm going to let gal roger tracy and the three go and uh, as i said we'll put the <laughs> replay up all right folks thank, thank you. you thank you thank so you. much Bye. jerry thank you yeah goodbye let's just have a quick look and see who was on <laughs> Oh yeah, a few a few people have disappeared by now. But anyway, you had a good number come on, so hopefully you'll be back again in the future, and we'll get a few more people. Okay. All right, take care, everybody. Thank have you. a good week, and uh, next week, yeah, we have uh, yeah we have some more mystery presenters coming up. It's getting <laughs> busy. Uh, yeah, after months of not not too many people coming, we're now just like there's a tidal wave. <laughs> Could be the weather. All right. Take care, everybody. I'll be seeing you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Terry. You. You're welcome. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome.